Hello friends, in this video tutorial, we are going to see how to monitor system resources. You see that your server has no value if it is not uh, running any service or any application. You may be running a web server, a database server and those application services consume disk space, they consume system memory, that is RAM, they consume CPU resources also. And sometimes they consume virtual memory or swap memory also. So we must monitor them. And how to do that? We will learn them one by one. So we'll keep this video short and uh, we'll uh, touch every, every concept one by one. So let's discuss about uh, how to uh, monitor CPU and memory related resources. So you run top command. Type top top. It will show you a dashboard and this dashboard will show you what all activities are currently happening. So the process ID, the username running that process, what is the priority? This NI column shows nice value or priority value. Virtual memory used, resident memory used, shared memory used, CPU used as for status or state. This uh, particular process is in sleeping mode or running mode, etc. Memory uses, that means RAM, only RAM we are talking about. For how long that process has been running and what the process or command name is. Look at the top line. It shows you that this particular system has been running up for the last 34 minutes and there is currently, currently only one user logged in. And the load average, the last one minute's load average is zero. That means this system is almost doing nothing. You see this CPU line here? It shows you a value of over 99% idle. No process is waiting for system resources. So this load average has three fields. The first field shows you the load average for the last one minute. The second field shows you the load average, the CPU consumption for the last five minutes. And the third field shows you the CPU resources activity, activities for the last 15 minutes. So activities are shown by the top command, but you see the load average actually, okay? Or the CPU load average. So load average means CPU load average or CPU system, CPU uh, resources being utilized. You need to see how many CPUs are there. This line shows you CPU or CPUs. It's a combination of all the CPUs or community uh, uses. So if I have two CPUs, I don't know how many CPUs I have. So I cannot depend on this load average value. I need to check out how many CPUs are actually there. If I see the value of one here in the load average, and there is only one CPU configured for this virtual machine or physical server, that means my CPU is 100% utilized, 100% utilized. But currently it is 0.02, that means only 2% utilized. But if I have two CPUs, that means it is only 1% utilized. And if I have only one CPU, that means it is 2% utilized. So 0 0.01 means 1% utilized, depending on the fact that there is only one CPU. I need to check how many CPUs are there and I'll show you quickly. Hit number one key. Now the CPUs become CPU zero because there is only one CPU configured for this virtual machine. If I had 10 CPUs, this would start with CPU zero, then CPU one, CPU two, CPU nine, like that. For each CPU, there would be a separate line of these statistics. I have other ways. I can type LS CPU. And you can see that there is only one CPU configured. So if I had two CPUs or four CPUs, I would have this output for each of them shown here. So remember that if I have one CPU and I run top command or uptime command and I see a load average of 0 0.01, that means it is just 1%. If I see a whole number, one year, one. So one would mean only 100% utilized. And if I had two CPUs and load average is one and there are two CPUs 
then it is just 50% utilized. So you have to divide this number, this load average by the count of the CPUs and you would get a good number of CPU utilization. What I mean by good number? That means a number that you can depend on, that you can rely on. It will not be so much misleading. Otherwise, it is a misleading uh, number if I just look at the load average and I don't look at the CPU count. So, I'll show you quickly again. Hit the top command, hit number 1 and you will see all the CPUs listed there. Starting with CPU 0. Hit Q to get out of this uh, dashboard. Run LS CPU. It's another way. And you can see how many CPUs are there. Now, let's have um, one another way you can go into this uh, directory slash proc or processes hit ls you'll see all these numbers are related to process ids and there is this file cpu info you see processor number zero and the details of that processor it is same as we do with the LS CPU, same output, almost same output. So let's run this command again. If I had two CPUs, I would have this information for each and every CPU. And my, uh, you know, counting starts with the zero. So processor zero means the first CPU. So you can do something like this. Use grep command to uh, search for a specific word and uh, we can then uh, use the word uh, processor here and the pass to the file you see we have only one processor now use hyphen c here one that means the word processor is found only one time that means only one CPU is configured. So that's all about the CPU resources, how we can check them. Now, uh, before I end this uh, video, I can show you another example. Use PS command with oper operators such as AUX or options. We don't have to use a dash here, but we can use it if you want to. You see PS command or process statistics also show you who the user is running that particular process, what is the process ID, CPU utilization, memory utilization, etc, etc. And the command. So you have PS command, you have top command, and you have LS CPU, and we also covered uh, that uh, file cpu info file and we can run grab command or we can just look at the contents of this file that's all friends thank you bye bye